you know, like I said, I'll share that with you in the executive session. Also, um, as you know, the EDC staff and the SMKT with Orlando, we're putting together this video for the, which is called the City of San Juan Tour. Uh, this video will pretty much showcase the city's different existing establishments, the, the new potential developments. We're gonna, that's the one that we met with Mr. Contreras. Okay, I was gonna ask you that. Yes, that's the, the one. Same thing for Sergio, the same. That's the same that's one. That's what we were gonna use or through his program. Right, as a matter of fact, that we're supposed to get together uh, with the Lady Marie from uh, SAMS Engineering, uh, possibly on Friday, after we take a look at the video that uh, Mr. What's his name, uh, Orlando was putting together. It's gonna be a very powerful video. It's, it's pretty much the same that, that we had before with the closing and opening of the COVID. Uh, but he's sending some more video to it, which is gonna be a very nice one. Uh, also, uh, as you remember, as, as you know, this past Wednesday we had the very successful ribbon cutting with Ataco Palenque. Uh, I wanna thank everybody that is here that took the opportunity and the, uh, to be with us during the ribbon cutting. I think it was uh, very well put together. I wanna thank the staff, Ms. Marta, Ms. Laura, Mr. Bob for helping us out and also some of the staff members from the city. Uh, it was a total team effort, total team, uh, work that we did at the uh, Taco Palenque. I think uh, those, those lines have not stopped since that day. They're, I mean, they're long, and especially in the drive-through. Uh, inside, uh, it's, uh, it's, it may not be packed, but there's pretty bunch of people there. So it's, it's always packed. I mean, not, not really packed, but there's quite a bit of people there. So we're just waiting for that sales tax on this coming uh, within the next week or so, más o menos like on the 15th or 16th. And we should see an increase on, well, maybe next month, because we were looking at the month before. But next month, like around the 15 or 16, we should see an increase on those sales tax. So that's what we're waiting for. Uh, other than that, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, the city is doing great, getting lots of visibility with the EDC, the marketing team, along with the city IT department, they're working diligently side by side in promoting the city as much as they can, as we can. That's all I have for the report, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, should you have any questions? Yes, Mr. President, I got a couple of, uh, sure. go ahead. On the first one, has uh, anybody shown interest in the hotel now that the uh, City Hall future plans have been declared? Not yet, sir. I have not heard anything about the hotel. What about any other area in that, any other building or area in that location around City Hall? Nobody interested in? The, the only one that we've been talking to is that corner that belongs to Mr. Phillips. Okay. That's about the only one that uh, we heard some people, you know, making some noise on that. Okay, on the next one, um, what about behind the meat market? The second item you said that there's a possible meat market yes, sir. across the actual meat market that is there right now. Right which across. it just expand, which is great. Obviously, right. the business is there. Right. Right, right across Aguilar okay. on the west side. Remember but, that we but, had that, that uh, vision about a maybe like a mercado type of setting? Correct. That's what we talked to the gentleman, and uh, he was very interested in that. He's looking into it. What about behind the, the Aguilar's west? I'm sorry, east. 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 Yeah, but nobody's the addition or there? oh the other where the warehouse used to be. Yes, yes. I have not heard anything not about that warehouse. Okay, okay. Uh, and then on the next one, the EDC video, where where are we going to showcase it um, for local and out outside our our community public? How are we going to reach out to the public? Actually, what, this what is we, what avenues are we going to? This use? is the RGV. Uh, Setting out of Westaco. Okay, that's uh, set here, right? Okay, right. but in addition to that, uh, what, what other avenues are we getting? Are we it'll it'll to be use? more than likely broadcast, uh, broadcast, more than likely live. live. And once we finish with that video, we we'll, we can always broadcast it with our own media, well, we, social we, we media. We can blast as much as we can at, at every and any all possible like, avenues yeah. of that. But I think he also mentioned uh, the Guardian and, and all these other uh, right. things that, that would be involved right. with, through RGB through, through right. their program. I was uh, I was leading towards a commercial. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of cities that are out there promoting their own city with the commercial. And, so. and Mr. Contreras, just so you'll know, uh, we started doing that uh, brainstorming Correct. now that we have the San Juan News. And the guys are going to be going up and about with the different establishment locations, doing some sort of like like, like what you said, commercials, and also inviting some of the uh, some of the guests, some some of the elected officials, board members, and maybe like on a segment every Friday, there's going to be a particular segment that will showcase the city, the developments, and pretty much what the city is doing. Yeah, uh, and touching up on that is because I mean, those past couple of ones have been made, have been. They've been impactful. I mean, they, they've been good. The, the, the one we did for City Hall, 
you mentioned that and that one was great and all the other ones during the pandemic that they created right uh we don't need any other resources or anything i think we can do it in-house because they came out nice right as a matter of fact uh slkt and along with the it they're coming together so that working uh, together they're working to re together very well and i think uh, the expertise that orlando brings to the table uh is actually not teaching our guys but you know uh, allowing our IT guys to get more at ease, more confianza as to what they're saying and what they're doing. And I think it's a, it, it's a good positive approach with the uh, SMKT along with the IT on our side. Arjona, I'd like to recommend for the owner of Taco Palenque, what's his name? Uh, Ochoa, Ochoa. Francisco. Ochoa. You know, what I remember him when he spoke, he was so surprised and, and, and obviously genuinely surprised how much business he wasn't expecting to generate that much business and i think um, too many people have underestimated our potential here in city san juan and he saw it right. so if he gets interviewed i think it would definitely benefit I, I, us. including the clip of, of him talking there a uh, clip or something like that off that video because right. right there he 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 pretty much nailed it know, he, he put it in place for, for san juan and he right. did it very eloquently and and, and proud you're absolutely right. Well, we'll reach out to Mr. Ochoa, Please. see if he's available. If not, we, we can always uh, reach out to Mr. Marcelo Rodriguez or one of the sons as well. We'll do that. Any other questions or comments for our director? Okay, if not, we'll proceed with our next item. We've got a presentation. Item number six is presentation, uh, which is a report on EDC grants by Dr. Fernando Castillo. I just saw him walk in. Welcome, Mr. Castillo. You have some good news for us. Come on forward. All right. Good. How many grants have applied? <laughs> Five. Very good. Good evening. Good evening. Gentlemen, I'll just get to, to what you have there in front of you, I believe. The uh, first uh, item there, downtown revitalization project. Basically, on that one, uh, it's just the purpose of it is to increase or maintain and attract businesses that you have uh, relocate businesses to the downtown area. They don't call it downtown area, they call it more like a, a business district. So that kind of, uh, rather than downtown. And on that one, uh, uh, you could do sidewalks, um, you could do lighting, you can modify the street to allow for more parking and um, slow down traffic so that people can cross, because uh, I, I would imagine that this, the business district would be Nebraska, maybe from the church back to, we have not defined exactly what the area is, but we can more or less anticipate what it is. And so those are the kinds of things. Now the purpose is not just to make it pretty, the purpose is to relocate businesses to that area. And I can see where if there's more parking, where you slow down traffic by uh, something like Bar Deep and where, the, where their um, city hall is. They now are down, put, people were complaining because now they had the, Los Camellones, but the purpose of that was so people can cross the street, you know make it safer. Uh, so that's the one that, that, that we're looking at. Um, now, on that one we had to clear several things. Um, I believe I wrote in there that, that you uh, need to, well, the population, because at one time was under 20,000, but in reading the guidelines it's 20 to 50,000 under. So I checked the, uh, with Mr. Gaza, I checked the population last time, and it was under 50,000. And, and what is this, Mr. Castillo, Dr. Castillo? Pardon? What, what, what is this on, as far as the population? 20, uh, uh, 20 to 50,000, under. Oh, to apply for the particular, okay. Right, so what you're saying basically is we qualify, we're, we're ready. Under the population. Now, there's one more that, it, that I'm not sure because I have not gotten the information, because I have not asked for it yet is that if, you, if you're getting some grants already, then you may not, or we may not be able to qualify for that. You're already getting some grants. 
So I'm just assuming that we're not. I'm going to check it. And, and if we're OK. Are you going to give any grant or a grant for that, those particular purposes? The ones that I mentioned. OK. That I'm talking about just that right. one. We don't have anything in line for those particular purposes that I'm aware of yeah. that, that we've been awarded or that we're. President, I have a question real quick. Uh, Dr. Castillo. Yes. You're applying for whether it's downtown or business district revitalization project with what entity? Um, basically, it's USDA. USDA. Well, that's one of the that's one of the sources, but there may be others. Doctor, do we know how much is the grant worth? I mean, how much is we're able to get? The, the grant, the grant, basically, uh, you submit an amount and you justify it. Now, one thing I'm glad that you're asking, uh, Mr. Contreras, because all of these projects that I'm going to mention to you, they need to be shovel-ready, which I don't like the term, uh, because shovel-ready can be anything. Uh, but basically, shovel-ready means that you already have some prints, some preliminary, and, and I don't like to spend any money, because we can make a budget without having to go to an engineer or, because we can see what the costs are. We can call companies and well, how much are the lights and how much it is. So, so that we don't invest any money up front, but, but we need to come up with a budget. We need to come up with some preliminary uh, plans. They don't have to be sealed, blueprints. And I think that you have some of that. I think that Mr. Arjona and Mr. Gasser have worked in some of that stuff. Paul, you were here during our workshop. Yes, sir. And, and we elaborated a lot on that study that had been done for specifically for revitalization of downtown. And there was all kinds of data in there that we could use for this type of grant. Well, that's what I've been doing. I reviewed the Fantastic. whole thing. Good. And we can use all of it without having to go back and there's no need to know until you know you have money. Done then. For us already. So, so you said USDA. United States Department of Agriculture, right? How, how do they come into play with district uh, business revitalization? They have many. They have many programs. They have uh, what? They have like forty departments. They have agriculture. They have. You want to put up a fence for your ranch, and one of them is economic recovery. For economic recovery, that's what we're focused on here. Well, any of these, I have to say is economic recovery, and I already prepared uh, the beverage, the, uh, the uh, narrative for that, because we are, we, we are in a recovery. Businesses are shutting down. Uh, we have all kinds of needs, and so I, I have that part, you know, we'll just go, we get a big violin. And are any matching? This one, this one is not. Well, the matching would be the, the work that you've already done, that grant, that, that study that you did, that I think you paid like $60,000 on that already back then. So that one I, you know, when you were mentioning, I'm going, oh, well, great. But there's no need to go out. Uh, we can use a lot of that. Now, uh, what I would need is to get a budget updated, but we can talk to neighbors because everybody's got beautification already far. Why is that cool? But sad is. So we can ask them, you know, how much, uh, how much was it? So, so that's a possibility. And once we clear whether, you know, we don't have any other, uh, you know, that they don't want people to double dip, so just to make sure we don't have anything else. It's the, so that's one possibility. Probably clear that here. We don't have a grant writer, Mr. Arjona. Does the city have a grant writer? You do. The EDC doesn't have one, right? Well, now we do, but no grants writer. Just to know or to to tell him that we're not, we don't have anything in play right now for that particular purpose. Then we don't. Okay. Not that I'm aware. So, I mean, so, so we. So we don't waste time. We're good. Now, so you can proceed with that. Yeah, you're right. Now, to, to, to mention that whatever the city has, uh, it's like you have it. It's the same entity. I mean, I know it's different and so on, but what affects the city affects the city. In terms of grants. Well, what I'm trying to do is get you your answer. I, I don't think we do have any. 
anything pending with USDA doing? We know. Okay. Uh, I will check with the, the, the one agency I need to check with is the urban county uh, grant or block grant. I need to check with those guys. Because uh, he's asking here. How long do you foresee us finding out this information? To no, well, just it's right here in Alamo. I mean, it can be done. Spark, so either uh, it's hard to get an answer on the phone. No, 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 yeah, it's very difficult to get anybody on the phone. They're, they're not answering the phones because they're not there. Marana, but the man? director of the PR group, Urban County, Lupita, where Lucerna used to be at. Hmm? Yeah, Lupita, she's still there. Uh, PR Avila is the director, no? Uh, I don't know if it's PR Avila. I think Mr. Barcos también. Yeah, don't know. Tony Barcos yeah. is assistant. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I have I have PR cell number, so we can call. Them. Yeah, it, but, and, I can, and I can stop by. It's right behind the Alamo City Hall. Sin far. Uh, it's not there anymore? Sin far. What? <laughs> they moved last year. Okay, I'll get the information. The, okay, so that's one that is right on target with the revitalization. It's not about, that the objective is not just to make it pretty, it's to bring and promote businesses, uh, to relocate, or to open up, or to stay open, and and we have we have the justification on that. The second one that I put that on my memorandum to you or to Mr. Arjona is Public Works and Economic Adjustment Project, which is I believe is a scale up project now. Is the same. That one is the USDA Department of uh, Commerce, and and basically that one that one is about. 100,000 to 3 million capacity. And uh, that one, uh, um, it's, a, it's a matching. Actually, there's no matching grant. There's no free grants. Every, every grant, except this one, the first one that I presented to you, has a matching. Now, but what happens with a matching is that <clears throat> And I was listening to you when you were discussing possible businesses interested in different properties. Is the, what happened with this one, uh, you presented um, to bring businesses uh, that are innovative, that are going to create jobs, or they're going to provide training, or you can re-equip with technology, uh, current or new facilities. Uh, by that I mean like white, uh, white band and uh, the latest on technology, but there may be solar panels and all that stuff. Uh, now the matching is 50%. So you go like, well, and I don't want you to put 50% of a million or, because that one is, uh, it's 100,000 to 3 million. So the way, the way that it's approached or the, the, uh, uh, the strategy, to present this one is to identify businesses which you are already that may have a product that would be innovative or high technology. And you were talking about that old building, San Juan, which is a historical building. And the structure seems to have a lot of potential. And if you designate that building, you don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy it. But you can designate a building or facility uh, as a um, site for some kind of a project and innovation. For example, uh, there was a company that was doing batteries for solar panels. Not solar panels, but batteries, just to get the energy from the solar panels stored in the batteries. And so they were kind of messing with the idea and they got up close to a million dollars to up, to scale up. And that included equipment, facilities, all kinds of stuff. Now, now, now they did not, the, I said they got one million, or oh, $800,000, close to a million. So the way it is, is that you identify those people that have, making, they're making something. It doesn't have to be a rocket, or it doesn't have to be anything like that. Uh, there was another person who got uh, about six hundred thousand dollars 
And she was doing uh, where you put the spices, the little containers of the spices, where you would measure the spices right out of the can without having to go to a spoon. Or she got about six hundred thousand know? dollars. Okay, so I said she got. I don't know. The 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 city or a university or a county, you apply for this, you get one of those people, and they put their capital, and you put your grant, and that's what is called a public private partnership. Which it works. I mean it works because there's people out there that they already have a product, but they need to scale up and they need equipment. So you're applying for all of these. That, that's that's no. where you're barely going to apply. I'm bringing it to you because, okay. you know, we can't just apply. You know, we need the blessings from somebody, and that's you. Uh, now, okay, so that's the second one. So so don't be scared because of the matching because we can get... No fear here. We can get a company that gets a product and they want to scale up to sell in larger amounts. Get more information, you might make the financial decision on your label and it's going to be like the information you're giving. Yeah, and so that's what I'm saying. So we don't right have to. Now. Okay, so, okay, so, so that's, that's the second one. And then we're jumping to. And then, of course, the parks and recreations. Parks and recreations, there's always a need to improve. Even if you hit parks, there's always a need to improve them. That one is in a cycle, so that doesn't come up until, I believe, September. But, oh, the other thing I need to tell you, when you apply for any of these grants, you're going to have to submit and you have to kind of show or prove that you already have something done. You have a blueprint, you have a plan, which they call shovel ready. So those that don't want to apply, because they're not on the list. And they may get funds if nobody else does. There's some left over. So all of this required some effort on part of the um, agency that is requesting the funds. Okay? And again, uh, there's ways to do it where you don't have to invest uh, a lot of money. So, we can, so for the downtown, we would need a plan. Which we have already. Which yes. We have already. Yes. yes. We have already. And that's what I was about to say. We have it already. You don't have a budget. A what? A budget. So we need a budget. Yes. And a plan. And we can get, you know, I can, I can work with Mr. Gaza, Mr. Arjona, on getting the budget. Just a matter of calling. Do we have any, any kind of budget, Mr. Gaza? Well, I mean, I, I, I've spoken to a few contractors, uh, one individual here from town, and he's given me uh, guidance to do that. I know FAR has all that information. All it is is just to reach out to our neighboring city, and I'm more than sure they could uh, show us give us an idea exactly what the square footage, how much they spent, and, and the light fixtures, and pretty much the benches and what, what they've improved. So I've spoken to Mr. Arjona regarding that. I mean, all it is is just giving us the okay to be able to go out there, reaching out, and start gathering all that information, and that's where your budget is going to, you're going to create a budget from there. All right. Uh, back to your question. This is a presentation on the grants that are available, not a presentation of grants that you have applied for. On we haven't applied for anything. No. Okay, that, that, I want to make sure I understood that. Yeah, uh, this is this is really the phase you of the, the right. Is this to, of the authorization to apply? Exactly, but this is the phase of the uh, the uh, planning, the research, making sure that we going to go after something that is doable and that is going to really make a difference. Um, but, but because, you know, we just started with this, with this type of uh, uh, research. Um, I think we're done with the research. We ha I have the applications in my desk. They're ready. The, the applications are there. But let me finish with this, and I have one more. Que ya se pasó, it's already done. This one came up, showed up, all of a sudden, and this is a mortgage assistance project. This is not a revitalization, but it's one of those nice programs that uh, the assistance is for six months to pay homeowners to assist them to pay six months of uh, payments. And uh, it's up to $350,000, so it's not that many people. 
And now this one is already gone because Friday we were supposed to submit a, a an announcement. And and again, you know, if, now there's no matching on that one. There's really is the money is there, it's free, and it can be managed by the EDC, and it's good for the community. So I thought I'd present to you one of those. On this particular uh, item, I was just talking about. Now let yes, me sir. just make something clear, Mr. President, if I may here. So you're saying right now that the deadline's passed, okay? But but you've known about this, right? I found out uh, Thursday. That's Thursday. Yeah. I, well. Is it? Yeah, but but I thought I presented. Well, what I was getting to is this, yes. Mr. President. Uh, if uh, Dr. Castillo finds out uh, these opportunities, I would hate for our schedule, meeting schedule, to delay his. Uh, Pursuing these, these I, I agree with you, Mr. Contreras. I don't think I don't think he would need permission from us. Give him the give green him the light to on. apply for anything and everything out there. He has my blessings to apply for anything that's out there, without even That'd coming to the board and asking for permission to. Apply. Now there's many there's many that are not, did not bring. Final approval to the board uh, at, at the end at the end no, to apply because there's no. no. And, no and let, let me just board. let me just say chime, chime let me let me just chime in real quick. Yes, you're absolutely right. We, we can apply to any and every grant that is available. However, the problem is that if we get a grant awarded and then for whatever reason we decide not to take it, then it's going to count against us in the future. Okay? We just need to be careful on that. That'll what, and that that's the only thing, but I mean, as far as... Yeah, I, I, I know I have a very good idea. You know, Mr. Arjona, Mr. Garza, they, they, they kind of uh, mention exactly what the, what the focus is, so we're going to stay on that focus. I'm not going to apply for anything just because it's there. Um, but there's some grants out there that it's good to have, like the revolving loan to businesses. Uh, one of these allows for that. Uh, the one also that allows for um, a, business, a business center, that one also allows for a business center. Uh, so, so we have those alternatives under, under the same grants. Dr. Castillo, yes, sir. if I may. Um, Right now, I guess the main focus, or my main focus, I guess, pretty much is on board, is the downtown revitalization or the beautification of the downtown. Yes. So my theory to you is stay focused on that grant and whatever is available for us at that particular item and only, and I don't care about uh, what happens with the uh, playgrounds and because, and I do care in the future. But right now, our focus is the downtown. Okay. Not anything to do with parks, swimming pools, baseball parks. It's the downtown. That's my focus that we all, I think, have encountered for. What about the businesses that may come in and bring in, you know, a million? For the downtown revitalization, yes. Anything that has to do for downtown, I I'm with it. Okay. Well, yeah. Mr. President, can I? Uh, I think they're just concerned about the matching part. And if there's a loan out that you're going to apply for, I think the best thing is do a presentation and, uh, you know, show them actually basically what it's all about, what it entails, and let them know if there's a matching part or not. I mean, so yeah. we could all be in the same, you know. I can tell you that everything that is out there requires a matching. But the matching is done through the public-private partnership. Because the private part is going to put the matching, not you. Any other questions for Mr. The, the last thing I have, Mr. President, when Ms. Garza, Mr. Garza is talking about in reference to uh, matching, when you apply for those kind of uh, grants, I, I personally would like to see it, what, what the breakdown is, not, not um, what the possibility is, is what the breakdown of everybody involved in that grant will be. So I know who's responsible for it. There's, there's, there's a couple of ways that we can do that. Um, I have an office a couple of blocks away, and uh, I can bring him and present him to you here and wait for a meeting, or uh, we can visit and I can show you exactly the breakdown and uh, the specifics of, of all of that, and it'll save you time. That's probably the best way, just get yeah. a hold of us, you know, we'll Be go and visit with you. Yeah, because here, you know, if I'm going to tell you, it's going to take an hour, and you don't want to leave at 12 o'clock tonight. <laughs> But I really thank you very much. If you don't have any other questions for your thank attention, you. I appreciate it. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you.
Next item on the agenda is uh, item 7-1, consideration and approval of the annual audited financial report for the San Juan Economic Development Corporation uh, for fiscal year ending September 30, 2021. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we have uh, Mr. Garcia and Ms. Tina here with us to give us a presentation on the audit that was worked on this a uh, couple of months ago. It's a very good audit. I think we're very proud of the work they did. So, Mr. Garcia. Uh, my name is Manuel Garcia. I'm with Garcia and Peña CPAs out of Westlaco. And I'm here to go over your audit for, this, for the year ending September 30, 2020. And we can start on page A, which is the audit report, the opinion on the, on the audit. On page A, at the very top, we begin with, the, uh, with a summary that we're auditing the financial statement for the EDC. And then we have management responsibility in the second paragraph, auditor responsibility, and we have our opinion on page B at the very top. In our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the respective financial position of the governmental activities of the San Juan Economic Development Corporation as of September 30, 2020, in comparison also with 2019. And we want to, we can turn to page one. Page one is the uh, comparative statement of net position or balance sheet as of September 30, 2020 and Crescent 2019. At the very top, we begin with the cash balances, which are very comparable to last year. Uh, we have investments, which are a little, a lot more than last year at 301,000. Then we have uh, due for mother funds at 137, and that's really the bond issue that y'all issued for, for the construction of the city hall building, the portion that, that y'all are gonna pay for. And of course the money is being held by the general fund in the city. Then of course we have the capital assets, which didn't change much from last year. Below that we have the liabilities, we have accounts payable, and then we have the wages payable, and then of course the, the bonded debt down below of 221,000 coming due this year, and of course the, the balance of 3,310. Then we have deferred uh, resources of 56.53 pertaining to the pension plan. Now in the net position or capital, we have an investment in a positive manner for 236,000 for the assets, we have 50,000 that are reserved for the debt service. And we have a negative unrestricted of 1,332, which is a decrease of about 410,000 from last year, 1,743. The main reason that this is negative is because on the debt, you have about 2,420,000 ,420 of debt that you're paying for that you don't have any assets for. This is debt that you incurred for the city. On page uh, two and three, for the statement of activities for September 30, 2020 and September 30, 2019. Our expenses this year were 723,000 compared to 615 last year. And pretty much, they're pretty comparable overall to last year's. Uh, we have economic incentives this year, 47,500. City? Is that what you said? Yes. This is this has been debt that has been there a few years. It's not not and it didn't happen this year. This year the debt that you have is for the city hall. And I'm assuming that we're gonna pick up the city hall balance on the, as a balance sheet item. So one of the things that uh to answer the question Mr. Debt that, uh, if you recall, we did some refinancing uh, maybe a couple of years ago. So those are some of the debt that that, it, that was incurred back then that we still have. 
and it, it'll be over within the next maybe 15 years, 20 years, something like that? That's the note? Yes, got it. Let me see on the 32. On page two. Actually, it last a few more than that. <laughs> if you look at the very top of page uh, 16, that's your uh, the debt service requirements for the next years. We have all the way to 2040, 20 more years, really, or 19 years. And it all pretty much is the same, about 220000 a year, unless uh, you start adding some more debt after today. See, at the end of the year, at the end of this year, you still had a, a net profit of four hundred ninety-six thousand, compared to four hundred ten thousand last year. And of course, it looks it looks dismal to have a a negative on your on your on your on your fund balance. But if you look at on page, uh, let's go to page six. When we look at the governmental funds. Because this is full accrual that we're looking at. When we look at page six, which is the way normally a governmental uh, funds work, we have the same revenue at the top, the million one forty-one. Expenses were eight hundred and five thousand. This is a little higher because we're including the principal on the notes here. Then below we have the other changes that are not related to your to income or expenses that occur every year. We have the lawsuit settlement, then the proceeds from the bond, and then of course the premium on the bonds and the issuance cost. So you end up with a, with a bigger profit here, 1,443. See, it's different between the two, but here your fund balance is positive by 2,280, because we don't have the debt. The governmental funds do not recognize the debt on their balance sheet like the other one does. And it's basically how the government governmental funds work. We, the debt is sitting to one here. The only thing you're looking at here is how much is it costing me every year to to fund that debt. You know, the debt service in this case is 160 why plus would, the 91,000. Why wouldn't they show million. the principal on this year? Why so? only last year? Why wouldn't they show that debt service? Did we always show that's, it. That's a governmental rule, or is that what you said? Well, in in um, we actually have two bases of accounting when we do these audits today. It used to be all like that we see it on page six. But a few years back, they changed it where we would have the accrual basis of accounting and we recognize the debt and we recognize the assets on the same balance sheet. Normally on the governmental funds, we don't recognize assets and we don't recognize the debt. But the that's city. why we're negative. Is so, that why we're negative? Because you don't... You don't have the assets there? Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes, that's why in this particular case, well, on the other one, shows it like that, correct? Yeah, but see, we have the assets because we never had them. We just agreed to pay some debt that the city incurred. Now, what, this is the, another crazy thing of governmental accounting, you know. We can incur debt that, that we didn't really benefit from entirely. Let me ask you a question. If, if the, the EDC decides to go out for, for any kind of funding or anything like that, wouldn't this be a, a, a uh, we'll be in a situation that we won't be able to be able to reach out and, and grab any funds? No. It's not, you'd go with a, with number six and page six? Is that what you use? They would, yeah, they would look at both sides because see, you're covering, you're looking at how much funding you're going to get in the year and how much, how, what are your obligations for that year? Look at your budget, your budget at your, your projected revenues, and it'll say, uh, by the end of the year, you're only going to spend so much money. So that's what they're basing it on. But at the end, of the, when we begin with the with the budgeting, is we set aside some monies to pay the debt, and then anything left over, that's that's what we base it on for going on COs or funding and bonding and stuff like that. Basically, that's what they, whoever is looking at is looking to see. They're probably to be looking at page six because this is the one that shows exactly how much your expenses were. And your obligations at this point. There's two sets of uh, documentation here. Yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> See on, on page uh, what's the one we have? Uh, 
on, on the uh, on page fifteen. See, we have your you have your long term debt. See, at the very top, we begin with the, the bond issues that you have, the the one million one million five and the 905, these two debts you don't have any assets for. You only have the asset for the 1,100,000 down below. And down below it shows you the activity for the year on your debt. You know, it shows the beginning balances, your addition of the new bond issue, and then the reductions, the payments, and the balance and what's due next year. So I said, let me ask a question. Uh, the interest rate is 3% to 4%, so they're all fluctuating rates, is that correct? Yes. And, and your payment is going to increase every year as long as... Is there any way we could refinance this? I well, mean, I know... Uh, I don't know if I'm... You're the, you're the CPA. Would you recommend we, we finance this? Because these are 3 4%. I'm only sure we could probably get a better rate somewhere else right now. Am I well, correct? Well, it's always recommended. You can refinance at a And this is what they've done in the past to bring it down to the to the 4% that they have, 3 and 4%, and the other percentage, because if you look at the bond issues, they're all refunded. One of them was refunded in 16, the other one was in 18. And this is a new Looking bond issue. That, would that be a recommendation from you? Sir? To, to be able to go out and, and refinance these? Yes, it, if there's. Save ourselves some money? Don't you consider space on the, uh, on the refunding? Okay. Uh, this is something more for the financial advisor. That right, right, exactly, right, and correct. Because the last thing we want is, we don't want to refinance, and let's say we're going to save 20000 but then again, the payment that we have to pay out is going to be 50000 We're going to be, you know, uneven. So it'll be on a financial advisor type of question. Correct. Right. Okay. Any questions? See, the only other area that we have here is our report in the back on compliance. Of course, you don't have any, this year, you don't have any federal grants. The only thing that we have this here for is because we have a carryover item on the, uh, on your balance sheet, which is the EDA grant, the receivable to 219000 And, of course, we we're concerned over it because it's been there for, for, some, for some time. But I think it's coming to a conclusion. If you look at the very bottom of page 20, 28, uh, this year we found out, or the administration found out, that the, the problem we haven't received the money is because of the federal agency that has it uh, was in turmoil, and they hadn't figured things out. And now I'm not, when I was telling me that they're going to get that money pretty soon. Yes, I, I got a word from uh, Mr. Jimenez, right, Angel Jimenez. He, he is a representative from the EDA grant. One of the things he said was that uh, the city is in good standing, uh, everything as far as the project, and this has to go back to the Lexus, Lexus CDA grant. And if you recall, last year we had not gotten uh, reimbursed in this particular monies, uh, but uh, like he said, that the, uh, the, EDA grant, the EDA office was in turnover. Uh, they, they had like, the, whoever the lady was taking care of this account left, and then somebody else came in and we picked up on another, none of these projects, and then somebody else came over. And then the pandemic uh, hit everybody, so they're working out of the house. Uh, he did call earlier today saying that, hey, the city is in good standing, or DDC is in good standing, having to do their closing the, uh, the file. What that means is they're closing the file to re for reimbursement. So I want to say that uh, he, he's supposed to send us an, uh, a report on that. Uh, what I gather from this gentleman is that within the next couple of weeks, we should have something already coming over this way, if not prepping something coming over this way. Um, he's been working with Hollis uh, Rutledge as far as the uh, closing of that grant. Uh, it looks very favorable, or it is favorable. They submitted the report yesterday, the closing documents, to the, uh, I guess, to the higher-ups so that they can uh, review the, the uh, closing project, the report, so that they can actually work on the, the reimbursement of the monies. How is this affecting our budget? Oh, but this one was just money that should have been here, but it, it wasn't. It really doesn't affect the budget. It's just a, a receivable that is still pending, and we have not received all those monies. It's affected cash flow. 
looking at your findings, Mr. Garcia, were there any findings, uh, negative findings that require our remedying in any way or anything that you found? No, sir. We don't have any of this yet. Nothing. They're just basically uh, just describing what they would. We just described the one that we had was was ongoing from 2019. We don't have any anything to add, and there's really just a corrective action on that one. The gentleman was very surprised, the, uh, Mr. Jimenez, that the project was actually everything was submitted back in 2018, and obviously there was no follow through on their on their part. And like I said, uh, there was turnover, and then the pandemic hit us, and uh, they were working out of the house, and they were very limited as far as what they were working on. But he said that the the the, the actual report is already been submitted to the uh, higher ups as of yesterday. I remember you from last year. How many years have you been with us now? Three? Four? Four? Four or five years? Fourth year. Any other questions for Mr. Garcia? Okay. The only Appreciate other item we have is this. Uh, we have a supplement in your report that we call communications with those charged with governance, it really is it's a standard communication that we issue every year when we complete the audit. Basically explaining to you that we don't, we didn't encounter any major problems in the audit or any disagreement with management. Well, gentlemen, uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with you. Appreciate it, thank you, and thank you for your work on this audit for us, appreciate and it. And it, it is really a good audit, and you can tell that uh, I told Mr. Arjona in the last few years, we've noticed the change that has been happening here in San Juan, you know. It's really big, you know, when you come in from where you were a few years back to where it's happening today. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Both entities are doing well. Okay, our next item is 7-2, consideration and approval the audit oh do this. yes thank you for for letting us know that uh, <laughs> so we have been presented with our audit uh, do I have any action do I have a motion to accept the audit as submitted so move. I have a motion do I have yes, a second yes. go ahead go ahead so I second it He's okay we've got a motion and a second all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye all opposed same sign motion carries thank you Okay, item seven, two is consideration and approval of a resolution in support of legislation, Senate Bill 1465, filed by State Senator Juan Chuinojosa and House Bill 4119, filed by State Representative Ryan Guillen, and any other action relating to man, operation of the Texas Small and Rural Community Success Fund Program, administered by the Texas Leverage Fund Program. Chairman, members of the, of the board, this is the same, uh, pretty much uh, little support that we actually do every every other year for the Texas Leverage Fund. And it's stated there, Chuy Hinojosa, Senator Chuy Hinojosa, uh, did the filing on the uh, on the uh, Senate side, and then Mr. Ryan Guillen did it on the House bill side. So it's just uh, for us to support it. The city has already approved it. This supporting the agreement, this is to replace this, the one that was the Texas Leverage, Leverage Fund. Right? That is correct. Okay, do I have a motion? Okay, so so move. I have a motion to approve the resolution as submitted. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item is 7-3, discussion and possible action, if any, on attending Urban County Conference on May 6, 7, and 8, 2021 in South Padre Island, Texas. Sharjona? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, apparently uh, this year it, it is going to happen in May, the Urban County. Uh, the uh, we have already registered from last year, if I'm not mistaken, so we don't have to pay any more fees or anything like that to, to, the, uh, to the conference or the hotel. Everything is paid for, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, it's just coming back to you guys and see if you're still interested in attending the 6, 7, and 8. It's so some can, can, depending right. on the dates, is what I'm saying. This is just to let you know that it's, just to let you know it's going to take place, uh, approving it for us to attend, and then you can figure that out later, yes. Well, we can put it on. I, I won't go, so put me there, yeah. I, said I will not be attending. So right now it's just approval. I think the item is just to approve that 
for whoever well, wishes well, to go. Whoever is going to go. Allowable, okay. yes. Do we need any action on that? No? Uh, yeah. I will say so, yes, sir. Make a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve this item that we're accepting. Uh, whoever wants to attend this conference would be uh, okay to do so. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. When's that? 23rd of April. Just make sure we, whoever needs to. Okay. Make, okay. Well, you know from me already. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, item 7 for discussion and possible action, if any, on mini grant for Popeye's snow cone for $2,000. Do we have Mr. Garcia? Mr. Garcia? No? Anybody from Popeye's? No. Out to him, Ms. Marta. Couldn't couldn't get hold of them. Yeah. All right, no no action at this time. We always require them to be here, yes. right? Okay, take no action. Then our next item is our consent agenda. What do we have on our consent, Mr. Arjona? All right, Mr. Arjona, real quick, were they notified? Did I hear if they were notified? Yeah, we reached out to him. I know he changed his number, if I'm mistaken. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, I know Martha reached out to him. Let us know. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. I'll, I'll catch him. So item 8A is approval of minutes. That is our consent agenda. We've got minutes for October 20th, 2020, November 17, 2020, and March 2nd, 2021. Did you all have time to review those? Does anybody have any questions or changes that they want to make to the minutes as they were submitted? If not, I'll entertain a motion. motion. Okay, I've got a motion from Mr. Blackie to approve the minutes as submitted and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is executive session. So San Juan Economic Development Corporation will convene an executive session in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Vernon Statutes and Codes Annotated, Government Code Chapter 551.071, and Texas Government Code 551.087. It is now 625, and we will retire. Well, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. We've got a motion from Blackie in a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Thank you. We're going into executive session at 625. Right? Yeah. Okay. Open it up. So uh, we will be reconvening at 720, uh, 725 on executive item number one, discussion of possible action on ex economic development negotiations, letter A and B, no action will be taken. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. There's a motion and a second. All those, all those favor say aye. 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 At uh, 7.27. Seven. Right. <laughs>